the Honorable Minister for Security, General Jim Wezi, Senior Officers of the Uganda People's Defense Forces, Senior Citizens, Awarokore, Jore Nawana Wawe, Jore Nawana Wawe, Asewa Nawanyavu. Echikuru Chabiona, Njirangu Tshemeku Jabura Jeno Tumwine, Avoka, you'll never have another chance to be talked about in these kind of circumstances. So if you think we are getting too late, just add on a bit of Jia on your patience. General Tumwine, as we all know, is slightly more luckier than most of our colleagues that I remember. I think like the people who talked before me, there are people who died before the bush, the Kanyungtuzis, the Kamuradis, the who, when the struggle was being prepared. There are those who died in Kawamba, there are those who died in the bush, and actually, even more so, there are those who died just before we had completed the bush. And we lost quite a number of our comrades. The great group that had made this struggle a reality, we are lost and we buried them in many numbers at that time. The General Tumine survived and he's done and completed a bit of his journey, left with only two years about what the Bible gives to us, 70 years. Well, General Tumine can be remembered for a number of things. One of them was that General Tumwine was our natural leader. Actually, General Tumwine was not that appointed, if you look into the details of the matter. He didn't have so many appointments, but he was an accepted leader by all of us. He lived on top of us, not that he forced any of us to respect him, and not that he was maybe appointed at the highest levels for so long, but he was our natural leader. And as I notice now, it was not even about age, because indeed there are many of us who are older than him. Why I think General Tumine lasted on top of us was that he had luck, the lack of being trusted by the leadership of this country. I don't know if many of us have that luck. But he had that luck. It was his. I think he placed himself in such a way that he acquired trust from the leadership of this country. Actually, whenever I hear the president speak about General Tumwini, I think the biggest memory in his mind is when he taught him how to wrong. I think he keeps repeating it so many times. I don't know what was in Burunga, and I don't know what he was about General Tumwina at that time, and I don't know what was about General Museveni, the president of Uganda at that time. But he, I think having struck that relationship, General Tumwini had that privilege of being trusted by the leader of this country. The second point is that General Tumwine had the privilege of remaining afloat 
I don't know if you people have dealt with the frustrations of being disappointed, especially if you are very, very highly pitched. And I don't know if many of you know how to live with the disappointment. But Jenotumwine, you meet him on Christmas, whether he's on top of things or in general duties of things, you find the same person. And uh, maybe one of our biggest problems is that we don't know how to manage disappointment. In his own case, he did. Maybe this is the only symbol that brings to Mwini above others that actually gives him the true credentials of having been a revolutionary. For me, I think revolutionaries should serve whether privileged or not. So in this particular case, I want to thank General Tumwine for leaving his revolutionary court. One day, I was, we were attending the high command, now General Jim is here and others. I think I saw General Goa. And uh, it was an army council and General Tumwine came with a newspaper. In that newspaper, there was a big article. I don't know if he got it from the, some American newspaper actually, about the death of General Sanchez Ochoa, the Chuban general who defeated the South Africans in Kwatoko and Ovari. And of course, as you know, that is one of the reasons why South Africa ever gained independence. That's the only time when the South African forces were defeated thoroughly. And I think they realized that their time in power had truly come to an end. So for us, General Sanchez Ochoa, regardless of what happened between him and his leader, was actually a hero. In any case, we didn't know much about his relations with the leader of the Chuban Revolution. So General Tumwine came flagging this newspaper. And I asked him, I said, Afan, what is exciting about this? He said, can my new church acquit you to to Kashina Korach can't any chinaga and believe, but he later on explained to me that according to him, if you defeat you try to defeat a revolution, the revolution should defeat you. For me, being who I am, I, I got quite worried. But again, I said, anyway, this is another view. The view of another element of the revolution that is certainly not exactly my own view. So, but he defended it with every conviction. And uh, I think he was not the majority in the Army Council at that time. Most people were on my side, but for him, to the point I want to make next, he really defended his convictions, even sometimes to a fault. He defended his convictions and pursued them and lectured about them. That was general Tumwine for you. Maybe that's why he was quite re better readable by those who decided the fate of most of us in this revolution. <laughs> so General Tumwine was convinced that actually a revolution must run in a certain way and that by his own conviction was indeed his own way. And I remember that Sashi Zochoa example as a vivid memory about what General Tumwine believed in. General Tumwine actually had firm points of view, in case some of you don't know. Whereas he was very, very, I think, obedient to leadership. What I also recall in some critical times, he had certain views that he deferred and he expressed them. 
Maybe it was the method he used to express them that it differed from some of us. Because, for example, I remember General Tumine believed in the kingdom of Ankori. I don't know if some of you know. With conviction, and he stated it, he was very clear. He had his colleague who is still living, but I don't have to mention the name today. But they would stand up and defend that the kingdom of Ankore, like any other kingdom, is entitled. I don't want to go into too many things in that matter. But that is one peculiar situation where he stood firm. I remember we had views about people serving in the forces. I mean the forces serving in parliament. And some of us were saying, in a true democracy, forces should not serve in parliament because they are an outright part of the executive. And therefore, the executive mixed with the legislature would cause friction of interest. But General Tumine was always of the view that the army had to be in the, in the legislature because the legislature was such an important arm. For him, he translated the legislature as part of the revolution. And that was his view. And therefore, that the army must be in the legislature to oversee the revolution. He defended it very firmly, mobilized, went to every corner, and I remember he won the battle, and it was not my view, I must say, that actually the army must remain part of the legislature. I remember him lecturing me about Western democracy and what should be successful African democracy. So, when it mattered, he stood his ground and he defended it. Even in some circumstances, where like the two examples could have been very controversial, but he managed to stand and say, for me, I believe in this. Now, the other point I remember about General Dumwine was that uh, he, he had capacity to handle too many things in one constituency of thinking. For example, being a Moroccan and being a, a, a soldier, are not very easily compatible. There is always quite a bit of friction. But General Tumwine professed being a Murokore and at the same time was a committed general of UPDF. And of course, sometimes an, an artist, and I'm told recently, an artist, Artists are, artists are people who are very concerned about how the flowers go, how the world was created and how it must be. I heard it from one of his friends recently that he was actually an artist. Of course, I don't know how you can be an artist so successfully when the army uses the firewood to cook. But somehow, these were his convictions. So General Tumwini, was uh, that kind sometimes, combining too many positions that maybe were largely sometimes very contradictory. General Tumwini, by the way, had humor. I don't know if you know. I don't know the form of humor. I don't want to attempt to describe it. But he was sometimes very humorous. And Tumwine was never personal in his disagreements. Because I know how often we disagreed. You know, he was my judge in the court where I lasted eight years. But he was never personal. For me, he always said the, 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 the revolution thinks you are at fault. I don't think it was personal. So I give it to him. I gave it to him, and that's why for me, when I'm fighting my battles, I define my lines. So I can't have had any battles with General Tumwini. 
And I know he understood the importance of deployment. I have seen people cursing him. There is a former minister in another regime who came to my office when I was a minister of security. I'm sure people forget that I was one time. <laughs> so he, he came and said to Mukunda, I said, yes, sir. How come my picture is not here? Now, yes, I was one of the ministers of security in this country. Hey, so to Gamba Vinji, to Gamba Vinji, and yet to Munt Mukuni, you come Gandhi. I think say, Javi, I told him the man. Knock my Mukama and Wogu Alk, Gandhi. I tell you, your Gahevar Kugambaho. I do wait a teacher. So, if Gambo Yahati. I want to tell you that deployments ask for a lot more than your person can habitat with. Deployments, especially some deployments are peculiar and very difficult to deal with, especially in certain circumstances. So those who look at General Tumwine as having been at fault may as well go back and ask themselves, if you are in his place in his circumstances, what would you do? Maybe that could answer a number of questions before we go into, without going into many details. I've been looking at General Tumwine's children. Some of you do forget that most of our time actually at fat from some of us who spent quite a bit, a bit of it in prison. Most of our time, we are always working. Never in homes. But if for all this pressure and for all this absence, you can raise the quality of children that I see General Tumine's children to be, a lot of credit must be given to you. We work 28 hours so that you could spare off a few minutes to take care of your children and give them a direction. Now, Ravum Himuru Gambaji, now Yante Ivanje Chantu Irumishumiru, some last man of Mutunji. Kakubana Gambaji to Munumishumiru Kazakuendachi. Because he's really. Without any training, he's extremely eloquent. I have not seen someone in Kusima. You are a Kujwechera Jabuan, you know Kujwechera Utashoma, and Jat Kuchini Wanja Hango Kujira Nahura no Gam. So back to the point. General Tumwini, I'm sure, devoted a lot of time in tendering his children in a certain direction. In fact, in Yonkanta Mangua Kayo Revenji, and in addition, you can't imagine to me, Naka Gavente, Narangaka Gavente, culmination to this kind of human to hear is an ampana over you. That's also a lot of can go at you, had any intention you could use. Look mobilizing Governor Wama Fuzi, be to buy you PDF. And then Murwana and it over Muba General Manya. General in Avana Mushan, Mushan, one or one and over the age. I got to know an avenger and they believe in us. So one or one and our general moon or one and our general's time was seven on the average. I will now work on my own, no shot to no go money to work on my. So it's wrong, Kachi. To hear that time, General Tumine, Kumuevaza. Never more shaved Tarkuma, you can imagine Mundura Kazawa and Tumaganasha too. Namakum Kavi had to get a Hikum in the chin. Well, Ogona Otter Hanga in his own direction, and when Kajis and Jory Mujanti with all this similar hunger to Nikuangansa, that he was still among the remaining few, and he managed to clock sixty eight. So when it is over, we will see where the general to win. 
amabanja against gahoyo kuba no kuri bintu byensi aro nahura na kotinga ngu you can't afford to please everybody especially if you are part of the state machine the state machine is by its nature a deterrent so when you serve in that angle the, the, the image you put out is usually not the most uh, favorable we'd want to have. And if you are too lenient sometimes, then a country may fail to move forward. Now, in Pahoshi, we have a lot of people who are so as far as I'm concerned, we fuzo of to bakushana. We are kuzire wa show mesiwe. We only knock take a take and go zuma. Ranga mu hiri rukchira. We are hiri junka zau jenyu wumu kazu wambi ya jiruma na we. Akabum fakas kari amjati roko. Aturanga kumperi ya taran peris. So we only jangu zuma jeno tumine. Ranga mu hiri zivya tarahiri. Mujadzo kuzi katumine. Kanu mukama muhirizi chumuru chumuru.